What is going on guys? Let's talk about Bed Bath & Beyond. We got the earnings out of the way good. Um, we streamed it this morning. If you were able to catch it, that was awesome. I appreciate all you guys that were able to pop in there. Um, let's talk about the charts. Let's talk about the earnings. Let's talk about the Ortex and let's go from here. As always, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. It's just for entertainment purposes only. So let's be entertained. All right. So if you caught the earnings or if you're catching any of the articles out there, um, what I really took away was, yes, it was a miss. Yes, we probably anticipated it wasn't going to be any expectations in this earnings call. But in, in my opinion, it went as best as it possibly could. Um, I, I was really thinking it might miss by even more so than it did, and we would be in a world of hurt. But um, really where it held up, I, I'm happy. You know, um, it, even if I talk bad about it on certain days, I... I'm, I like the play. I like the stock. I like this. I, I like everything about this, but um, I can't come on here and say bullish every day and for everything that happens because obviously you can see the charts and um, that just wouldn't make sense. I, I mean, it might make you happy if I was doing that, but that's not what I'm here for. We're just here to basically talk about levels and take it bit by bit. So it's not that I'm coming down on the stock by any means if I'm ever talking about downside. Just uh, just know that. I do like the play and I'm happy we survived earnings. So whenever you're looking through those earnings, um, you know, we're, we're probably going to get hit with all kinds of news articles that come out and continue to come out. But um, what I did take away, I was just reading through and, you know, some of it is true and some of it is more designed around the narrative. Now, the the ladies that were on the conference call, I, I don't remember their names, but they they seem to speak very um very passionately about what they're doing they seemed confident they seemed to talk like they were going to turn things around and that they were all working together and going to do what they could uh, with what they had at the moment and take this in the right direction so i i like their confidence we got to see if they can deliver on that that's going to be the main thing as of right now but uh, one thing I did notice as I was reading through here in this article is um, you know it, it's the narrative tense relationships with vendors and, and they repeated a couple of times I think in those earnings calls saying how their vendors truly want them to succeed they want to do whatever they can they want to work together and make Bed Bath & Beyond or Bye Bye Baby continue to be a, a thriving business so um, that was one of the things just whenever you're going through you know the overall narratives of things make sure that you're not taking all of it as false but don't take all of it as truth either uh, I was trying to pull up so it well with the I'll find it later but it looked like about three million of those at the money offerings of the 12 million have been uh, they have been released into the market because they said that they made about uh, what was it 30 million so that kind of gives us an idea you know if they say in that they approximately have released 3 million of them and they've profited approximately 30 million what's that tell you well that tells you that they're releasing those shares somewhere in that nine to ten dollar range and i'm going to think that they're a little shy of the 30 million because since the offering was really announced i don't think that we've had very many opportunities for them to unload any higher than somewhere in the nine dollar and change range so if we get up there expect that there's going to probably be a little bit more um liquidity that would come out so to get a clear breakthrough right away, I think it's going to take just a little bit of time. But as you can see right now, we are just trending in this channel. But like I said, it's it held up good. I, I'm happy. I thought we were going to be a lot lower. So let's see how this all plays out, how long it wants to play in here. If you're following the overall markets, you know that uh, we set a new year low pretty much on the SPY today. So um, that didn't help either. And I was saying in that earnings, if I wished we would just get a consolidation day on the, on the overall markets just so that we could get a true read of what's going to go on, you know, post earnings whenever we had the market today. As far as the market selling off, I think Bed Bath & Beyond held up pretty good. And... Um, 
we're going to keep an eye on that. I mean, it's it's one of those things that are going to affect us, and, and I just didn't want the narrative to be, oh, this is all because of earnings. It's I don't think it's all because of earnings by any means. I, th I think a lot of this has to do with the market. Um, I think some of those shorts might, you know, start changing their tune as we're looking at what's going on as far as the short interest goes. My charts are all messed up today. I don't know what I did, but uh, there we go. So um, estimated short interest coming in at 37.73. Uh, free float on loan, 59.23. Cost to borrow still sitting right around where it was. Utilization still at 100%. I mean, if you see those kind of numbers, it start. I, I mean, if the shorts aren't right, that's a lot of buying pressure at some point. So either they are going to truly turn things around at Bed Bath & Beyond slowly but surely or quickly or, you know, the shorts will be right. That's That's the only two outcomes in the possible scenario. So um, in the meantime, I would say just continue to have a trading plan in this one because it could take time and we don't know, you know, which way it's going to truly work out. But even in this channel, as of right now, there are opportunities to trade if you have it drawn up. I mean, you you can swing these plays. I promise you, I, it's, as far as I can tell, the shorts don't need your shares and they don't care about your shares. Just remember, you're retail, and for the most part, you're just playing along with whatever big money's kind of throwing at it until something goes a little bit haywire. So, um, you know, we'll see at the moment whenever shorts actually start buying back into cover, and then if retail and FOMO and everybody else is buying along with them, obviously that's going to drive it up. If you're just sitting here diamond hand in your shares, that's fine, but you're not adding any buying pressure or anything. And, you know, shorts are going to do what they want. Market's going to do what it wants. It's all going to come down to really whenever things go haywire. And if, you know, there's a large amount of shorts that are being covered along with that FOMO and continuous buying pressure in something like this. But we'll just wait and see where, you know, where things actually want to turn around. If it's going to be a whole nother quarter and and we got to wait for new earnings see how how they're progressing as far as all of that goes and if they are on the right path you know w what's going to be the catalyst that's going to make shorts rethink their their position or is it going to be set up in a in a way that it could be a nice little gamma squeeze in the meantime those are just kind of things that we're going to be waiting on it, and um you know like i said uh don't i can't tell you what to do but my theory is don't let a position or a trade go against you. There's no reason. There's absolutely no reason. Your your position is not affecting any of these lines. I can almost guarantee you that. So continue to watch what we got going on. Let's see if the markets are going to um, absolutely destroy us and uh, or if we're going to almost do um, a turnaround from here. I, I don't know. I'm just watching be uh be cash heavy right now you know there's no sense in holding anything in my opinion um you can trade in and out of these things right now we have volatility everywhere we don't know if the market's gonna recover or if it's gonna go down so it makes it really difficult to have any kind of long play or long decision you just kind of gotta mold like mold yourself with whatever the market's doing for that day so you, you know, draw your lines up, see what's happening. If it breaks out, great. You know what way you're going. If it breaks down, great. You know what way you're going. But um, that's about all that we can really do in this situation. I mean, you don't want to continue to dollar cost average down, dollar cost average down, dollar cost average down. You know, you're going to work every day to come home and throw throw your paycheck into something that you're you don't truly know like we don't really know what is going to happen here it's it's not out of the woods so you have to keep that in mind always keep that in the back of your mind uh, a lot of these are just plays uh, all of them are technically just plays uh, that you can you can totally make several times a day just because you sell it doesn't mean that you don't like it you can always get back in whenever you see the opportunities i mean uh, i I'm, I had told you I wasn't holding anything going into earnings, and I did not. So what I'm going to be watching for is just where this actually bottoms out. This probably could have been a nice area for me to consider an entry point down here. 
Um, this could have been a nice entry point, you know, anywhere on your bottoms of your trends, and then you just watch it. And if it if it breaks below, cut it. Here you go. You can start over again. It's it's better than having the dollar cost average down you know, every time that you set another low. Uh, but it's your account, your money, your life, your work. You know, <laughs> treat it however you want. But uh, just just a couple little tips that maybe I could throw out there. And uh, if you want to take them and run with them, awesome. If you don't, awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming back and watching another one. Let's see when this turns around. Let's see whenever it starts to break out and go in the right direction for us. But overall, like I said, I like the earnings. I think that was best case scenario. Um, I it, I couldn't have been happier. I, I guess I could have been if something crazy went down. But, you know, as far as protection wise, I think that was okay. So that's what I got for you. I will catch you guys in the next one. As always, stay golden, people, and may your accounts stay green.